every area of your life. We ain't getting away with nothing. I found out after all these years, you don't get away with nothing. What you've done in secret shall be shouted from the housetop. What you've done in darkness shall be brought to the light. God help us to keep that in mind. We don't get away with nothing. And we shouldn't try. But oh, how weak we are. Come on. How weak we are. But let's not be hypocrites about it. Let's not be phonies about it. Amen? What you see is what you get. And that's the way we should live. But we should always try to be improving ourselves, but don't try to be like somebody else, because that's not who you are. That's right. not who God created you to be. Come on. He created you to be you. That's right. An individual that loves Him, that wants to serve Him, that wants to please Him above all other things. That's a golden treasure right there. Yes. That's the treasure. Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I want. I can't live without you. You hold my next breath, and I'm going to serve you until that last breath. Amen? Amen? That's how we should live our lives. Not to see how much we can get away with, but how much more we can do. Not by works, but because we love them. Yes, yes. I work because I love them. Amen? Because it's not about works. We're going to get rewarded for our works. But as we, we do those works for the Lord, be about our Father's business, because one thing, we love them. Yes. The Bible says those that are forgiven much, love much. <coughs> How many have been forgiven for a whole lot of stuff? Mm. A whole lot of stuff. Amen. None righteous, not even one. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to love more and hate less. <laughs> you shouldn't hate anybody. You're allowed to hate one person. Say it with me. Devil. devil. You're allowed to hate the devil and everything he does. But thanks be to God, we find the truth. We have found the truth. Jesus. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. I'm so glad we found the truth. You have too. It's what you do with it that counts. There's nothing worse than knowing the truth and not following it makes you more accountable. You know it. And if you're not living it, you're not following it, woe is you. The truth, the Bible said, seek it. you got to look for it. you got to hunger for it. you got to chase after it. And when you find it, whew, it sets you free. He said, seek the truth, and the truth shall set you free. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It's an ongoing thing. Because His truth is new every day. The Bible says, I believe it's in the book of Isaiah, truth has fallen dead in the streets. There was a period in time back then when truth has fallen dead in the streets. Because they had no king. Don't let it fall dead in your, in your life. In the street that leads to your heart. Don't let it fall dead. Keep it alive. The best way to keep it alive is to read it every day. Indulge yourself in it. Crave it more than your necessary food. If you didn't eat for a week, you'd probably start dying. Don't drink for a week, you will die. <clears throat> you get desperate hallucinations, all kinds of things. And that's how Christians get when they don't read and eat the Word of God and drink in that living water. They die a slow death. I've watched them die and widow right in front of me. Some of them are still out there half dead. The Bible says it like this. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, this is for us, the body of Christ, for the world today around us, for the United States of America. If my people, which are called by my name, shall, listen, <clears throat> humble themselves. God hates pride. Humble themselves. And what? Pray. There's not enough prayer going on. He wants us to pray. And then what? Seek my face. When you pray, you're seeking God's face. He encourages us. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face. And then what? Turn from what? Your wicked ways. God's people are wicked. Some of them. 
when they turn away from God or they're playing church or they're not serious. Yes, wicked ways. They forget the Lord days upon days, nights upon nights. Forget His Word and call themselves a Christian. I hope we don't have anybody like that in here, do we? From the wicked ways. Then, and only then, He says, will I, listen, hear from heaven. You want God to hear your prayer? You want God to hear from heaven? You want God to heal you? You want God to bless you? You want God to prosper you? He says, then I'll hear from heaven. When you do these things, I'll do this thing. He said, then I will forgive your sin and heal your land or heal your life or heal whatever needs to be healed. But He wants you to do your part. You do your best, God does the rest. But we've got to do our part. And maybe you wouldn't struggle so much. Maybe you wouldn't be so fearful about certain things. Maybe you wouldn't, you, you know, learn to, maybe you learn to trust God more. Maybe you wouldn't be so quick to judge. Quick to criticize. Come on. None of those things please the Lord. But he said, seek my face. Psalms 27, 8, one of my favorite verses. I read it often. Talking about the Lord, he says, Psalmist said, When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Thy face will I seek. People say, I, I want to seek what's in the Lord's hands for me. I want the blessings of God. And I often tell them, I said, Seek his face, and you'll get what's in his hands. Him, seek His face first. Then you'll get what's in His hands. Then you'll receive the blessings. See, that's what's missing in the world today. That's what's missing in the United States today. Not enough people are seeking God's face. Our country and our <coughs> land wouldn't be so divided and so destroying itself. It's like cancer eating itself from the inside out. Two different countries in one country. God lovers and God haters. Bible believers and unbelievers. People that have a king named Jesus and people don't even want a king no matter who he is. They, do, they don't care if he came walking on the water again. They're so polluted and deluded in their thinking and in their ways. And we see what's happening all around the country today. I wonder how that's working for them. Saw in the news the other day a woman didn't uh, uh, get the right person in her mind that she wanted to see be elected in an office and she screamed for five minutes like somebody stabbed her. That's how desperate people get for their side of the argument. That's how that's how insane people can be when they don't have a king. Because they wanted to continue to live and be, uh, continue to live in their sin. And continue to have their way. And continue to have abortions. And continue to have same sex marriage. Can I tell it like it is? God said He hates all those things. Say, preacher, are you a hater? Yes, I'm a hater. I hate Satan. I hate sin. Amen. I hate compromise. Amen. But we love the compromiser. You hear what I said? We love the sinners because we were sinners. We compromised. We said stupid things, even maybe about God, in our ignorance like Paul did, and others in the Bible. And yet God in His mercy looked beyond their faults and saw the need. He looked down deep and saw the Spirit, saw that hunger, filled and covered over with dust from the world, lust from the world, misunderstanding the things of God, not knowing the Lord at all. Worshipping the creation more than the Creator. 
as the Bible says. So we were ignorant. And God takes that into consideration. But some, take it a step further, what's worse than being ignorant is being wicked and evil and not wanting to hear the truth and be set free. That's where it becomes dangerous. That's where it becomes scary. That's where it becomes critical for their soul. When they don't want nothing to do with a king. Like we said earlier. Again, how's that working for them? Not too good. What will they do on the day of judgment? What can they say on the day of judgment? What is left to argue on the day of judgment? Nothing. Nothing. The rich man in Luke 16, another rich man, in hell, now wants to become an evangelist. When he didn't want nothing to do with a king when he was on the earth. Now he wants to serve the king in hell. But the Lord said, it's too late for you. It's too late for you. But Lord, I've got five brothers up on the earth. Let me go and tell them. He will do anything to get out of hell for a season. <laughs> Let me go up there and tell them to watch out for this place. It's real. I didn't believe it, Lord, but I believe it now. Too late. You had your chances. You turned it down. You didn't want a king when he was offered to you. He said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. No, Lord, he's arguing with God. Now, no, Lord, uh, even if one came back from the dead, they won't, Jesus said they won't listen. Even if one came back from the dead or from hell with smoke all over them, flames of fire, they wouldn't believe. Oh, that must be a trick thing. Because <laughs> they don't want to believe. They don't want to believe. See, there's a difference between not knowing and not wanting to believe. Living in ignorance and living in rebellion. Big difference. And God knows the heart. And He searches the heart. He searches the heart of every person to see what's down deep inside. He can get rid of all the junk. He can help you. He can do anything. He'll help you. If you all He wants to see in you is a want to, a desire. I don't know about you, I was a mess. I was the devil's right hand man in my ignorance. But I always had something there for God. And that's what I'm talking about. He looks down deep. Just like you had to have something. Now you won't be sitting here today. You wouldn't want a king today. You want one. You Hopefully you have one because God looked down deeper than the surface. And He saw something in you that you didn't even know was there. That cry for God. Lord, if there's a, how many ever say, Lord, if you're real, show yourself to me. I'm looking for you. I just can't find you. Mm -hmm. He said, seek and you shall find. Amen. Amen. You need to seek. That's what you say. You've got to seek His face. Yes. Seek the heart of God. And boy, I'll tell you what. It doesn't get any better than that. When you start seeking Him, things happen. First, it starts to happen in you. It happens in you. You could be so messed up, you could be miserable, you could have a bad day as a Christian, and you go into the presence of Almighty God, everything changes. Everything changes. Because you spent time with the King. And when you can't, it's impossible for you to spend